My name is Ryan Miller, and for the past 15 years, I've helped hundreds of people to raise millions of dollars for their funds and for their startups. If you're serious about raising money, launching your business, or taking your life to the next level, this show will give you the answers so that you too can enjoy your pursuit of making billions. Let's get into it. In this week's episode, I bring on Erwin Katzoff. Erwin has consulted with celebrities and world leaders such as Larry King, Bill Clinton, Joe Biden, and massive funds like KKR and the like. Join Erwin and me as he talks about his company trade missions and how he gets fund managers that are just starting out all the way to some of the most seasoned ones in front of massive foreign investors by leveraging his company, trademissions.org. You don't want to miss it. Plus, Erwin reveals what he's seen in fund offerings that tend to get the biggest checks from the best institutional investors, providing us with the fundraising strategies we need in our pursuit of making billions. Here we go. Hey, welcome to another episode of Making Billions. I'm your host, Ryan Miller, and today we have Erwin Katzoff. Erwin runs trademissions.org. It's a specialized company that's doing some impressive things in the investment world. He helps bring fund managers to embassies around the world to meet massive institutional investors. So what this means is that working with Irwin can result in massive fundraises and breakthrough partnerships with some of the best investment firms on the planet. Irwin, welcome to the show, man. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, it's, it's it's good to have you, man. I've, I've gotten to know you and I've been following you for a while and I am so impressed with everything that you've done. You're such an impressive individual. I can't wait to have your story and talk about uh, how you help emerging fund managers to raise capital overseas. And Let me just the- correct you just on one second. I'm sorry. Sure. It's not just emerging fund managers. We okay. have some, um, but we've also, you know, Canyon Partners, KKR, Kleiner Perkins. Uh, you know, we've had many well, well-established intellectual ventures, fund managers. I think it has a particular use for emerging fund managers because, you know, Raising capital, I think, is one of the hardest jobs out there. Yeah, it separates the 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 mice from you know the boys from the the man, <laughs> the women from the man. It's it is tough. Yes, very tough, and it's even harder when you're an emerging fund manager. You've got to kiss a lot of frogs to find the right <laughs> princess. So it's particularly helpful for them. I can't wave my magic wand yeah. and make it any easier than it is. No matter how you slice and dice it. It's hard, yeah. but fundraising, capital raising, is a numbers game. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, we, I'm from Canada, from Montreal, so I le- used to like to say that you miss a hundred percent of the slap shots you don't take <laughs> in hockey, right? Yes. And whoever, you know, it used to be Babe Ruth had the most strikeouts, but he also had the most home runs. Not anymore. But so you've got to get up to the plate and swing. What's beautiful about the trade missions program is that we can put you in front of. 50, 60, you know, I, I have the Singapore trade mission coming up October 14th. I have 91 LPs registered for it, that the U.S. fund managers will meet over a day and a half in Singapore, right? Now, that would normally take people probably two years to arrange. Yeah. So we can expedite the process. I can't make it any easier, but I can help it happen in a quicker way. So it's good both for emerging and for well-established fund managers. I love that. And and you've got quite uh, quite an interesting story. I, I'm sure our fans around the world uh, would love to know. Uh, how did you get into this industry? And and uh, just walk us up that, and then we can talk about trade missions and, and all of the, the good stuff you got going on. I think everyone's story is interesting. I can share it with mine, but I think it's important that, you know, we realize we are all dust in the end. We come from the dust, we go back to the dust. Everyone's story is fascinating. Um, And I think, you know, that's actually an important part of sales is really to look at each person as a fascinating individual made in the image of God. Um, Now, I happen to have been a rabbi for 25 years, so I do believe that people are made in the image of God. Mm-hmm. But I think if you're not a spiritual or a religious person, you don't believe that, you've got to look at each person as unique and special yeah. and not just be there to, to pitch your stuff. That's right. Because people sense that. And I believe people do invest with people. Um, so I, I worked as a rabbi for 25 years. As a rabbi, I brought, I realized pretty quickly that, that 
you know, I, I could accomplish more with individuals by getting them to Israel than I could by studying with them once a week for, for two years. Israel is the center of the world's three greatest religions, or three biggest religions, not greatest, three biggest, mm -hmm. Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Mm -hmm. Judaism is really one of the smallest, but in terms of those that have had the most impact on humanity from the Western world, you know, putting aside Buddhism and Hinduism, Judea, Jerusalem is the center of the three major religions in the Western world. And whether you're religious or not, I have found that individuals I brought to, to the Middle East, to Jerusalem, whether they were Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, were tremendously impacted by being in Israel. The spiritual energy just kind of sent them, they were like sizzling, right? So I, and as I was a rabbi in LA for yeah. 14 years, I saw that if I got people to Israel, I impacted them in a really powerful way. So I was fortunate to meet Larry King, who recently passed away from CNN fame. He's an atheist. I was a rabbi, believer in God. So we wrote a book together called <laughs> Powerful Prayers, where we interviewed 100 famous people, everyone from the Dalai Lama to Tommy Lasorda to Muhammad Ali to Lady Thatcher to President Carter Bush Ford. And we'd come back. He was an atheist. I was believed in God. So we'd argue about it, you know, how did he, this guy said he believed in God, he had a miracle, he spoke to God, and Larry would say, how could that be? So we discussed that, and then we started doing trips together. Yeah. And over the years, President Biden, when he was a senator, came with me for a week, Secretary of State Kerry on the Republican side, John Ashcroft, Tom Ridge, Christy Whitman, Newt Gingrich. I brought a lot of business leaders. Howard Schultz came on his first trip with me, Barry Sternlich, uh, Ken Goldman, who now runs Eric Schmidt's family office, he was CFO of Yahoo. So I saw very quickly that not that bringing business leaders there, the tech scene was just in its early beginning, but the found co-founders of AOL came with me, the head of AOL Ventures, they bought some companies. So that, that quickly grew into bringing hundreds of tech leaders and business leaders and about the commissioner of the FDA, and they invested in, in tech, in biotech, medical tech companies with biotech executives, that the, there was something that was really powerful about getting people out of their you know, day-to-day -day existence and into a different environment. And that slowly evolved. Um, I, I would then, after 25 years as a rabbi, I went and got my Series 7, I went into business, and became involved with different members of the U.S. Department of Commerce. I was appointed to something called ITAC-6, which was the International Trades Advisory Committee, um, helping the government, advising the Secretary of Commerce on international trade in, in biotech, in, I'm sorry, in, in, uh, in renewable energy. And because I brought so many tech leaders to Israel, they suggested that I maybe do one of these trade missions. So I did one in 2012, bringing 10 venture capital, private equity, and uh, real estate managers to Israel. And over the years, it slowly evolved. So from 2012 to 2022, I've now done 53 trade missions, brought over 600 U.S. fund managers wow. on various delegations. We've gone to India, to Australia, to Hong Kong, to Singapore, to UAE, to Israel, um, to Switzerland, Canada, and many countries in South America. And it's just a really impactful, powerful way to help US alternative asset fund managers meet foreign LPs. Wow, that that is phenomenal. And what a great, great explanation of that industry. If you're right, fundraising can be a challenge at, at times, even for the I best, mean, most- Marriage things. and fundraising are the two hardest <laughs> things I've done. And sure. fundraising is a tough slog, especially <laughs> if you're an emerging fund manager. You got to kiss a lot of frogs to find those few princesses. <laughs> I but, love that. Yeah, you know, we can't we can't do anything to wave. I wish I could wave my magic wand and make it easy for emerging fund managers. You can't take anything away. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. It's hard work. Yeah. It separates you know the the, the boys from the men. Um, it's hard work. But this fundraising, this trade mission program can help expedite the process because in one and a half days, we can put you in front of 40, 50, 60 in Singapore. Coming up in two weeks, we have 91 family offices and institutions registered. Wow. You know, that's two years work. Yeah. 
That is incredible. And so um, for our funders around the world, um, what can they expect? Maybe walk them through a little bit of the process of, of how does that work? What can they expect? Uh, and then we can talk about uh, how they could reach out to you. Uh, I mean, the, the website is trademissions.org. Okay. Put in a little advertisement. <laughs> no, absolutely. Do it. Yeah. Okay. It's trademissions.org. Yeah. There are two great three-minute videos on the top of the website, one on a recent trade mission to Singapore, one on a recent trade mission to the UAE. Um, we take 12 funds on each trade mission, three or four venture, three or four private equity, a couple of real estate, maybe an impact fund, an infrastructure fund, and maybe one or two public equities. Um, and, you know, I, I, we, after doing 53 of these, I have a sense of who will succeed. Mm -hmm. So, and every one of them now is fully subscribed anywhere from six weeks to three months ahead. So mm -hmm. I don't see my job as selling. I really want to work with them to, uh, to assess, is this a good platform for them? Yeah. If not, I, I will advise them, you know, maybe you shouldn't go to Saudi Arabia. Maybe you should try Toronto. Maybe it's easier for you, you know, you're, unless you have a, a, a well-established track record and, and you're somewhat of a brand name, you might not do well in a market like the Middle East, but you know, LPs, family offices might be more open to you in Canada or in Zurich. So my, I'm there to help work with you to see where you will sing, you know, where you're going to resonate with the LPs. So we spend some time talking, understanding your platform. I try and figure out, you know, where, where which kind of LPs will do, will find you interesting and be and consider investing with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we explore the whole schedule for the year. Like in 2022, March we were in the UAE. April we were in in Zurich, Switzerland. June we were in Tel Aviv. September uh, we're doing Singapore. October we have one in virtually out of the Hong Kong consulate. And they're all sponsored. It's an initiative of the U.S. Department of Commerce. I'm what's called the Certified Trade Mission Organizer. I work with the department and with the team in each embassy. So in October, we're doing a virtual one out of the Hong Kong consulate and an in-person one out of the U.S. consulate in Toronto. In November, we're back to the UAE. and December, we're in Saudi. So it's a you know, eight or so. We also have a whole special track just on blockchain and crypto. Okay. We're doing one in November 8th and 9th, three continents, two days. November 8th in the morning is out of the Brazil embassy in Sao Paulo for LPs from South America. November 9th in the morning out of the embassy in Bern, West Germany. And in the afternoon with 4 p.m. here, it's 9 a.m. in Australia. So that's for crypto and blockchain. The others are for multi different asset classes. So I see myself as, as more of a consultant to try and work with the GPs. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, let's look at your platform, look at your, you know, who are tip, your typical uh, investors. Are they more high net worth, family offices, or institutional? Based yeah. on that, we'll figure out where is the best domain for you and then see if it makes sense to go ahead. Wow. We have a, a big menu, many different countries, yeah. um, and each one's a little bit different. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it, it's for me to say, you know what, it might be better you come back after you have a first close yeah, or after you have an anchor investor. Um, so after doing 53 of these for 600 plus U.S. fund managers, I do have a good sense of who's going to resonate in which market. And that's yeah. what I try and do. I love that. And so I, for our listeners around the world, I hope you can tell that Erwin is really good at when you work with him. Uh, he's very good at helping you to place and set you up for success. Um, and you could hear the, the, the compassion in his voice. I, I absolutely love everything that you've done. Now, I, my understanding is, Erwin, and, and keep me honest, my understanding is um, the trade missions that you work on is, is it sponsored by the U S Congress or is there something about no, it, it's exports? an initiative? Yeah. Okay. It's an initiative of the U S department of commerce. I love it. It's called the certified trade mission program. Mm -hmm. And I'm an organizer of those certified trade mission programs. I'm not an employee of the government. That's right. Right. Um, I, I'm what's called a certified trade mission organizer for the U.S. Department of Commerce. So this is one of their 
thousands and thousands of initiatives. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a, it's run out of the U.S. Department of Commerce, ITA, International Trade Administration. And there's a separate financial services division. And I'm a private business doing it in partnership with the U.S. Department of Commerce. Awesome. Important Excellent. to make that distinction. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. And from your experience, uh, which is vast and impressive, have you noticed what what works well? Have you are, have you are you seeing patterns? What are some of these funds that have done very well? You don't have to name them, but what are some of those things that uh, maybe some of our uh, investors around the world who run funds? Maybe uh, you can bring them up to speed on here's some of the things that really hit well and don't really work well. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed any patterns in that? Hmm. Well, everyone's looking for returns. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps. <laughs> so you've got to have, you've got to uh, have um, good, re- a good track record. Yeah good returns if you if you're an emerging fund manager you don't have a track record to show it's important you yourself have a credible track record as perhaps a, an angel investor that maybe you have two or three or four years under your belt that you can show personally what you've done mm-hmm. if you're an emerging fund manager i think it's important um where you you develop a thesis of what you believe will work and you do that yourself for a few years so that you can show some proof. I think it's important you have your own skin in the game, that you have the more, you know, if it's 5% than anything higher, that you are power pursue with your investors, your side by side, that's going to help immensely. Um, you've got to have good auditors and good accountants and good fund administrators and good legal. Um, you got to make sure all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed before you go out publicly. And I, and then, and then, you know, it's, it, people do give to people. Yeah. So I've seen some funds come on the trade missions and they send a guy who might be a brilliant analyst but he's not a great people person. <laughs> yes. And they might have the best product, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, but if he doesn't know how to explain it, he's going to have trouble. Yeah. So it's important to have people that, that know how to respond and listen to people and answer questions. And, and I think it, a lot of it comes down to personal integrity. You, you've got to be honest and have integrity, stand up, for your product and when the times get rough don't disappear yeah you know the, the people everyone's going to have some up years and every people are going to have some down years right if, if it was so easy and you had the perfect product right you'd be a billionaire yeah everyone would be investing with you <laughs> so that doesn't happen it's right. difficult the most brilliant people have tough years and tough deals and deals that go south I think when things go south, you've got to be stand up and be there and and deal with your investors, which is tough. Yeah. It takes a lot of, you know, your stomach's got to be tough to deal with that. But I think if in the long run, if you can do that, you'll do well. I love that. And do you have a, is there a typical ideal size or or, uh, asset class, anything else that uh, some of our investors around the world would be, we're, we're fine and fit. So is there, is there just any type to, of funds? To, to participate in this particular certified trade mission program, you do have to be based in the U.S. Okay, the fund has to be registered, incorporated in the United States because it is an initiative of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Um, I I found investors in every country we've gone to. You know, people often have have baskets for for many different asset classes. Um, I think U.S. venture today, right now, it's a little bit of a tough time and, and valuations are, have dropped and what was popular yesterday in terms of growth investing and is the valuations have been chopped significantly, but investors globally certainly have some of their, their assets, not all, no one's bet in the farm on it, but in venture, because everyone's looking to find that next unicorn. So 
not all investors, but I, I think bottom line is people are are concerned about wealth preservation and they don't want to lose what they have. So they'll put in some capital, you know, risk capital that they're looking for that thousand or ten thousand to one return. Um, and then after that, they're they want to balance diversified portfolio because when real estate's up, you know, the market's down. And when the market's up, real estate's down. And so yeah. they're looking to diversify geographically, asset class wise. Um, so most most people, most investors have a basket for many of the different asset classes, just to because that's the smart thing to do is diversify. Right. And I, I have seen that a lot of investors are looking to go, and I've seen emerging fund managers pick up checks, smaller ones, but pick up checks very quickly because they have a good thesis mm -hmm. and, um, and they have a lot of enthusiasm and energy and they've done well as angel investors themselves with their own capital yeah. and they can show that and it's, it's audited. Yes. So um, they're able, and I think that's important to have an audited history that you can show, even if it was your own money, what happened. So now when you go to launch a fund, you can show people that you've been successful. Verify. Yeah. Show me, don't tell me. I love that. And okay. And so um, how, as we wrap, as we round the corner and wrap things up, how, uh, how can people get a hold of you? I know you mentioned trademissions.org. Uh, is that the best place people can reach out uh, if they want to know more? Yeah. I mean, my, the, that's the website. There's a contact form there. My email is Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, yep. like Nancy, Irwin <laughs> at trademissions.org. Okay. But if that's hard to remember, just trademissions.org, go to the website. There's a contact form there. Yep. Uh, I think that's the best way. Yeah, perfect. I love it. And uh, any, you know, any last minute thoughts, anything else you'd like a uh, community out there to, to know or to learn about? When it's all said and done, what really counts is the people that you loved and opened your heart to and your family and your, your community and your society. Yeah. So that might be a different message that you expected from someone no. running trade missions to help people raise capital. I'm all for that <laughs> and nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And I like doing it, but I urge people to have balance in their life yeah. and not to get caught up in the race yeah. because when it's on, really at the end of time, that's what you want you know, is, is to know that you, you were with those that, that, that you could touch and that you loved and were important to you and that you were important to them. And we're that, that that's going to really have much more impact if we can all work on making ourselves better people and helping our communities yeah. and taking care of the loved ones. You know, my wife sometimes said to me, said, you know, if I was a rich guy, you would speak to me more. <laughs> and I said, you know, you're right. That's wrong. <laughs> That's wrong. Yeah. And I changed yeah. and I now live a much more balanced life. Yes. So I'm here to help you <laughs> raise capital, but I'm also here if you'll, if you'll spend time with me to, uh, to develop your your consciousness and to yeah. raise capital and to help the world through fund manage as a fund manager bringing things to the world but also developing our consciousness more yeah that's absolutely beautiful said and uh, many of the guests and you're certainly one of them ironically a show called making billions yes we do talk about making money but all of the people and yourself included they talk about yeah we make money but our driver is impact first income Second, we accomplish both, but so many people, including yourself, are deeply driven by making an impact. So I just, uh, I want to silently applaud you. So, you know, that's, that's enough for uh, Erwin and I, everyone. So um, as, as you're growing and building your fund and doing all of these things, um, you know, follow the advice of Erwin, seek a balanced life. Um, and if you're really ready to go for it, you got a great thesis, give him a call, go to the website, uh, and, and, you know, he's sent our, his email. So contact him there. They do those international trade missions. You do these things and you too will be well on your way in your pursuit of making billions. Wow. 
What a show. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Now, if you haven't done so already, be sure to leave a comment and review on new ideas and guests you want me to bring on for future episodes. Plus, why don't you head over to YouTube and see extra takes while you get to know our guests even better. And make sure to come back for our next episode where we dive even deeper into the people, the process, and the perspectives of both investors and founders. Until then, my friends, stay hungry, focus on your goals, and keep grinding towards your dream of making billions.